know that this right here for what? Myself, they call me J-O, A to the easy E yeah. huh. Know that we undefeated, y'all are beneath them speeds Just trying to air a grievance, but his lines are overhead Better check the air for clearance, call the tower This is our critic, he the air apparent uh -huh. Really, I've never been better yeah. Legacy, this is forever huh. All the more times I've been seven, I'm raising the bar You can go ahead and measure, yeah. Yeah. think about time for a toast yeah. Time that we welcome the GOAT yeah. Yeah. Yo, we're just leaving, I think about time that somebody go get on their coat You know I got all that anthem, come back in What you call that add -on? got anthems and bands with masters Getting them rights like my name was Miranda yeah. I ain't bigger dead than alive, I ain't bigger dead than alive One more time, this is forever, remember the legend, he never gon' die, yeah I ain't bigger dead than alive, bigger dead than alive Hi, thanks Hi. for arrive. Of course Okay, so What are the plans for the weekend? Mainly just getting in all my credits before college Right Cause I'm doing that dual enrollment mm -hmm. stuff for, with COS yeah. I'm planning on going to like Fresno State mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah, they got a D one water polo team there. You plan on playing water polo? Yeah. What about That's you? Really cool. Um I think I'm I'm moving after I graduate high school, so we're gonna move to Tennessee and I'll go to college there. Nice. So Any in mind? Just kinda go as you know, we um, go with the flow. Yeah, I go with the flow pretty much. I'll probably start at a JC and then transfer from four year. That sounds like a good plan. So Um, would you like to go get some food? Like Dutch or something? Yeah, let's go. All right, let's go. Hello? Hey, Jonathan. Where are you? Oh, I'm just driving right now. I just saw your Insta story. Weren't you just at a party? Oh, yeah. It was so cool. Everyone, there was like half the people were like blasted out of their mind. All right, we can go to Dutch. Um, what do you plan on getting over there? The Palm Beach lemonade. It's so good. Double blended though. Mm, it tastes might, way better. I might have to try that actually. It's more of like a smoothie. So mm. it like it just like I don't know. It's better than like getting it iced. I'll be fine. No, I only, I only had a couple. I'll be I'll be okay. Okay. Oh, that's a person. No, no, no. Are we gonna pay separately or together? No, I'll pay for you again. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Should we get some food after too? Yeah, do you wanna get like- We can get some Chipotle. I knew you were gonna say that. That's your, <laughs> I love also, that's your Chipotle. favorite place to go. Uh, I'll, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you later. I'm, I'll be fine. You don't gotta worry about me. What's wrong with that car? Is it like swerving? Oh my God, I think they are. Alyssa, watch out! Oh my God! Whoa! <laughs> What's the address of your emergency? Hi, um, there's been a crash here in Hanford West in the back parking lot. Okay, um, how many, is there any injuries involved? Uh, yeah, there's multiple injuries and then there's a lady, she isn't breathing. I think there was a drunk driver who was involved. Okay, someone's not breathing and you think there's a drunk driver? What makes you think there's alcohol involved? There's, like, beer cans in his car, I don't know, there's just alcohol bottles in his car. Okay, all right, we're going to get police, fire, and ambulance on the way, okay? We're going to get help and send them that way. If anything changes or gets worse, give me a call back, okay? Okay, thank you so much. All right, thank you. All right, goodbye. Okay. Bye. Jordan? All right. Yeah. Are you hurt? Are you feeling any pain anywhere? 
Oh, no, no, okay. All right. What do you got, Green? What leg is not feeling good? My right. Right leg? Okay. Warming up real quick. Off the test that we did in the, the preliminary alcohol screen, I believe you're too intoxicated to be driving. Okay, so we'll, be, uh, we'll take a trip down the field. Okay, so turn around for me, put your hands on your head. Try to feel out a little bit. Be nice feeling the drugs, you can crazy. Good thing the truck you want us to bring with you, so far. Move this hand on your head for me. Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Since you're in handcuffs, okay, I'm going to advise you your Miranda rights, all right? You have the right to remain silent. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to have an attorney and have him or her present ready for question if you so desire. Do you understand your rights as I will explain them to you? All right, Jordan. We're getting you to the hospital right now, okay? Uh, still your face and your leg? 
Yeah. Anything else hurting you? No. No, you're good? Yeah. Jordan, go ahead and back her. Go ahead and back her, dude. No. AMC 605, Ferryman McCoy, currently found your facility with about a four minute ETA. On board today, I've got a stat trauma. This is a uh, teenage female, approximately 17 years old, uh, involved in a motor vehicle collision. Currently a GCS of three, unresponsive with an unstable airway. Uh, we're working on respirations right now, and I have an IV in place. Four minute ETA, 17 year old female, unknown weight, GCS of three, loss of consciousness, MVA. You're bagging her at this time, and you've got an airway, or you've got an IV started. At I'm not too sure what's going to happen with their injuries. I do have an IV established. Death is 10:54. All right. Does anybody want to go with me to talk to the mom? Sure. Am I going to jail? Yes, you are going to jail. Suzanne, I'm one of your nurses. This is Nicole. She's also one of our nurses. 
We, um, we have been taking care of Jordan since she came in. I don't know how much information you were given. She was in a car accident. Um, the passenger, she was the passenger, the driver was killed. Um, when they brought her in, she was semi-responsive, but then they lost her heartbeat when they arrived here at the hospital. We've been working on her for about the last 45 minutes. Um, we've been giving her CPR, medications to get her heart beating again, breathing for her. But no matter what we tried, her injuries were too severe. And we weren't able to save her. And Jordan died. Do you have anybody that I can call to be here with me? Stand up, turn around, face the wall. I'm gonna remove the handcuffs from you. Sir, go ahead and turn to your right. for the Hanford Police Department. And um, I don't know how to say this any simpler, but your daughter, Alyssa, was in a bad accident. And I am so, so sorry to tell you that she didn't make it. She passed away. I am so, so sorry for your loss. So sorry. Jail. I was just arrested. 
to jail. I was driving after that party I told you about, and I had another car. My name is Pastor Stan Ploy. I serve Lakeside Community Church. I'm also a chaplain for the Hanford Police Department. On behalf of the family, I'd like to thank all of you for coming out this morning for this funeral service for Jordan Aspecia. Even though I am honored to stand before you to conduct this service, I can also say I do not want to be here either especially for a teenage student. When someone we love dies, there's such a wide variety of emotions we all experience. When a husband or a wife or a father or a mother or a brother or a sister or a child or a friend is suddenly no longer with us, it can trigger very strong reactions, emotions, confusion, and many questions. We are here today to find comfort in the God of creation, and especially to surround the father, James, mother, Jennifer, brothers, JT and Jeremy, and other family members with our love, our faith, and our prayers. I'm going to say a prayer on behalf of the parents. O oh God, my God, 
my child, my child. Sometimes there are no words. O God who sees my suffering, I care little now what becomes of me. Whether I prosper or diminish, I only want to hold my child again. And all of life is hammered thin upon the anvil of these hard questions. Why? And what now? If I had seen the end from the beginning, oh my child, I would have been more attentive to the beauty of your eyes, the joy of your laughter, and paid attention to every tear. I would have held you closer, longer, letting go those lesser cares of life and focus more on your needs and concerns. You have left in my heart a hole as wide as the world. My child is long as the rest of my life. O oh Christ, how will this ever be made right? Why do you wait so long to make this right? Anger, doubt, fear, and broken trust, O oh Lord, simmer in me like a pot boiling on the stove too long. O oh Christ, who suffered everything for me, how I crave the comfort only you can give. There is no solace, there is no refuge, no other advocate, none who sympathizes, no one who can truly relate like you can. You tell me you are with me, O oh God, even in the midst of this. I long to know you are with me, even in the midst of this. Please show me you are with me, O oh God, even in the midst of this. Amen. I was able to learn some things about Jordan. She had her whole life ahead of her. She was enjoying her high school experience. She loved playing water polo and being on the swim team. She was hoping to get a scholarship playing water polo at Fresno State and study sports medicine. She loved her family and they always had a hard time saying no to her. She was only a junior and she will never experience being a senior. She loved going to sports camps and loved being a coach for the sw town swim team, the Piranhas. She loved being surrounded by people. Relationships were very important to her. She had dreams of becoming married one day and having four children. She also dreamed of going to New York City and travel to every state in the United States. She was a caring person a great team player, reliable, and always wanted to help out. Now she will never experience life as a teenager or will ever be able to live out her dreams. You see, when you're young, you think you have your whole life ahead of you. You think you are invincible, that nothing bad will ever happen to you. But things can change in an instant. Every day is not promised. I remember my freshman year when I went to this very campus. I got to school in the morning and by break time I saw all these girls crying. Something bad had happened and I didn't know what. I finally learned about a junior got drunk at a party over the weekend and drove off into his friend's truck. He hit a power pole and died. It rocked our school big time. It really makes you stop and think, no matter who you are, 
where you come from, who your family is. Life is a gift. It's not meant to be taken for granted. It's meant to be lived in humility with a grateful heart. May we never have to experience another tragedy like this again. Let us all learn from Jordan's tragic death that we never want to feel this pain again. And let's all make wise choices and never put anyone in harm's way by the poor decisions that we make. Let me now close in a time of prayer. Father in heaven, unfortunately, Lord, every 15 minutes, someone's going to die because of a drunk driver. And a lot of those people will be teenagers. And we can only hope, Lord, through this experience, through this funeral for Jordan, that it would sink deep in each one of us. That we have to realize that the decisions we make have consequences. And sometimes, Lord, they are devastating, life-altering consequences, all because we made a bad choice. Help us realize that life is a gift. It's only given to us one time. We have to live it to the best of our ability and to appreciate it. We ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. okay. Um. Jordan's mom and okay to think of a life without Jordan is to think of a life with no laughter our loud home would become quiet our busy days of practices and water polo games and swim meets would become dull and boring little brothers will no longer have their sister there to look up to them. Your dad will no longer have his sarcastic sidekick around. And me as your mom will no longer have my first true love. Seeing your tiny little face come into this world was the moment I knew what real unconditional love was. Watching you grow into a strong, confident, athlete has brought so much joy. We live to watch you play water polo, but with you leaving us so young, your dreams of playing college have been stolen from you. Your chances of traveling with friends have been taken, and your friends will never know you past the age of 16. They will no longer have you in class, and they will not have you there at prom, and they will not have you there at graduation. You, as her friends and her classmates, hopefully this affects you enough to never make such a reckless and dangerous decision. In your years to come, you'll be like, yeah, I remember Jordan. That was so sad what happened to her. But for me, as her mom, I will live with the pain and the heartache every minute of every day for the rest of my life, wondering what Jordan's life could have been and what it should have been. every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, someone in the United States dies in an alcohol-related traffic collision. Today I died. I can't believe I didn't have a chance to say goodbye. I will never again see the light of day. Why was I the one to pay? I wasn't drunk, 
and I hadn't been drinking. But the guy driving wasn't thinking. My friends, sweet faces I'll never see. And now they have to say goodbye to me. My family's tender love will I never again feel. My hopes and dreams he had to steal. My life is over. I don't get another. The sad thing is, the one who killed me was my brother. This is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And I love you all. And I hope that when you guys leave today, that you do the right thing. Thank you. Everyone, please rise. The Superior Court of the State of California, in and for the County of Kings, is now in session. The Honorable Tom Snyder, judge presiding. Please be seated and come to order. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here for the sentencing uh, of the defendant in this case uh, for violation of Vehicle Code Section 23153A and B, violation of Penal Code Section 191.5, uh, uh, vehicular manslaughter with gross uh, negligence. Uh, appearances, please. Maria Hoover from the um, Public Defender's Office on behalf of Jonathan Thomas, who is present in court. To the people. Good morning, Your Honor. It's with a heavy heart that I asked the court to impose the aggravated sentence. The facts of this case are very severe. The defendant got into his car after he was drinking heavily. His blood alcohol level was 0.15 at the time of the accident. When he got into the car, he sped through town at a high rate of speed. In fact, he was going 60 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone, which is 15 miles an hour above the, the legal limit. And instead of just speeding, he also was driving in a reckless fashion, completely indifferent to life. He was speeding through traffic, weaving in and out of the lane, and creating a hazard for everybody around him and himself. Unfortunately, he wasn't paying attention to what was ahead of him, and he T-boned another vehicle. Sadly, there were two young girls in that car. One of them lost her life immediately. The other one suffered. When the police arrived, she was still struggling for life. They placed her in an ambulance, and they drove her away, and they tried to save her life. And she struggled hard, but unfortunately, she succumbed to her injuries. These two girls had so much ahead of them. Both of them were on the aquatics team. Both of them were rising stars. They were going to go to college. Maybe they would have gotten married. Maybe they would have had kids. We don't know because their lives ended. And they ended because of a stupid decision, a reckless decision by the defendant. And yes, he may have a lot of good things going for him, but unfortunately, as we have seen on that night, he doesn't care about life. He doesn't care about anybody around him. He did what he thought was fun, 
and two people died. So, Your Honor, I'm asking you to impose the aggravated sentence in this case. It's clear that the defendant does not care about people around him. He makes poor choices, and unfortunately in this case, these poor choices cost two people their lives. Thank you. Submitted. Jonathan, it's the judgment of this court based on the facts that are set forth herein. Uh, probation is denied uh, for uh, count two of the information violation of the penal code section 191.5 vehicular manslaughter with gross uh, negligence. I sent you to state prison for the aggravated term, not the mitigated term, the aggravated term of 10 years in state prison. Uh, that's for the death of the, the, the first young lady. The second young lady, the law, uh, were it to allow me, I'd give you a second 10 years. The law does not allow me to do that. I can only give you one third of the midterm, uh, which is an additional three years. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. Uh, your, your total sentence is gonna be 13 years uh, in state prison. Uh, you find $10,000, pay a restitution fine uh, of an additional $10,000. You're immediately remanded to custody for transfer to Wasco State Prison uh, for the reception center. Bailiff, would you take him out, please? Court is adjourned.